again, everything balances. A thousand dollars plus nine hundred dollars, a thousand plus nine hundred, everything is, is so far where it's supposed to be. Now Speed spends the money. Okay? He's going to go to Ajax used trucks and he's going to buy that truck that he's had his eye on for a while. It's not a great truck for 900 bucks, but it's a truck. Ajax takes the truck check and they put that check in their account, which happens to be in BB&T. So there's a deposit increase, another one here, for $900 and this is Ajax account, Ajax used truck. Now you might say, wait a minute, isn't that money two places at the same time? And yes it is. This bank has had the check deposited in it, and this bank, Wachovia, doesn't really quite know it's been spent yet. So for a while the money is in two places. It's in the process of being cleared. It's in transition, if you, if you want to think it's floating. That's another word that sometimes is used here. Then what happens is that the check clears. BB&T sends all the electronic information that is associated with the check to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve infor informs both banks that the money has been spent and that reserves are going to be transferred between the banks. And here's how that looks in each bank's T account. BB&T finds out that Speed actually did have the money, right? The check was good. And so they find out that their reserves are going to go up by $900. So they're in good shape, 900 and 900 balance, the check is cleared, Ajax used car and truck now has access to that money. Now back over here to Wachovia for just a minute. Wachovia finds out that Speed has spent the money, which is good, that's why he borrowed it, so we're not really surprised about that. So they find out two things. One, deposits here go down by 900, he spent the money. So that's not there anymore. And this is Speed's account. And they also find out that they've lost $900 worth of reserves. Because what the Federal Reserve did when they cleared the check was that they pulled reserves out of that bank and they put them in that one. It followed the check itself. So reserves here go down by $900. What's left in Wachovia? Well, my $1,000 is, sure better be, so that's still there. Speed got 900 and then he spent 900. So those two accounts kind of cancel each other out. That's netted out to zero. Reserves went up by 1,000 and then down by 900. So there are still $100 worth of reserves in the transactions that we've done here, which is just exactly the amount that Wachovia needed to hold against my new $1,000 account that my new $1,000 deposit that I made. And that $900 worth of loans, the loan that Speed took out, is still there. So $1,000 up and $900 down is a net of $100 plus that, means that there's $1,000 on this side of the balance sheet. $1,000 up, $900 down, and $900 up. And on this side, there's the $1,000. So that side of the balance sheet balances as well. Okay? This bank can't do anything. Well, Kobe is kind of stuck in neutral until somebody else deposits some money in there and then they can make some more loans. Now back over here to BB&T. <coughs> they now have new $900 worth of deposits that they didn't have before and now they can make out a loan. They have to hold 10% everybody in the whole banking system does. So if they hold aside 10%, the maximum amount, amount that they can loan is 900 minus 10% of 900, which is $90, or 810. And the whole story can go on again. We can keep doing this over and over and over again. Every time a bank gets a new deposit in it, they keep a small fraction of it as, no, as determined by the required reserve ratio, and the rest of it they get to lend out. We've assumed here that every time a bank gets deposits and every time they make a loan, they lend out all of it that they can. And in real life that isn't always the case, but you get the idea. And the thing that I really want you to take away from this is that second thing that I had written down here, and that is that every time the bank makes a loan, they create new money. 
If you think about that very first loan that was made to Speed, when he walked out of that bank, he had a loan contract in one hand and a check in the other. That $900 check didn't exist before. It was just as spendable, just as much part of M1, as the $1,000 I put in my checking account that started off this whole example to begin with. Every time a bank makes a loan, they create new M1, new money that didn't exist before. And that's what multiple deposit creation is about. This process could continue on and on and on. I could be writing T accounts and making up stories about people taking loans out um, and cover the walls of this classroom in here. Um, but we'll stop there because I hope you have the idea. Banks hold a fraction of their reserves. They lend out the rest. And when they make that loan, they create new M1, new money that didn't exist before.